Now, as the name might imply, the Lindell Railway incident happened at, well, east of Lindell Station on the Barrow Carnforth route in the UK. The incident occurred on the 22nd of September in 1892. So we're, we're going back quite a few years, you know, over a century. This is a pretty old case, but but at the time, you know, trains were the thing in the UK. I mean, still really are, but especially back then. Now this area had multiple sidings as well as four tracks, two goods tracks and two mainline tracks. The locomotive involved directly with this incident was number 115, a D1 class 060. It was built by the Sharp Stewart firm between 1866 and 1885, and these trains were, well, smaller, but for their time, they were alright. They were designed for shunting and switching work and things like that, and, or pulling smaller trains, and they were overall pretty decent little locomotives. The D1 classes were actually nicknamed Sharpies, which is actually kind of adorable if I'm being honest, and 115 was, as I said, doing some shunting work near the lines. However, as it was moving forward, the engineer, Thomas... Oh god, um... I only promised to try. Postlethwaite? Postlethwaite? I, 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 I gave it a shot. That. The Thomas that. We'll just go with Tom. Tom noticed the ground open up and collapse in front of the train. Now, thinking quickly, he cut off the steam and he jumped along with his fireman. His quick thinking probably saved both of their lives, as the engine, moving along without the crew, proceeded to plummet into the hole. 115's front end and funnel became embedded in the ground, though at this point it hadn't fallen far enough where it couldn't be seen. The tender was still actually within sight. The hole continued to grow, risking the other lines near where the incident was taking place. This is alarming because there was a passenger train on its way to pass through. Now, fortunately, they were able to stop that train, and the passengers actually had to get out and, well, walk, which is a little bit inconvenient, but they didn't fall into the horrific abyss. So, I, I, think, they, I think they got off as easy, if I'm being honest. Like, you know, I, I would rather have to walk a mile than fall into the unknown where the mole people live, presumably. Attempts to bring the engine back up met with little success. They actually got its tender out, but the engine itself proved a lot more difficult. It was heavy for one, but the hole kept getting worse. In particular, it kept getting deeper. The engine proceeded to continue falling in deeper and deeper, as if the earth itself was trying to consume it. Num num, delicious steam engine. Eventually, it got so deep that the unstable ground actually moved in and buried it, obscuring it from sight. At this point, it just didn't seem like it was worth it to get the engine out. It was far too deep, and they didn't even know how far it had fallen. But they still had a problem with the hole itself, because it was underneath a bunch of main lines. They needed to use it for trains. They had to redirect a bunch of other trains while all this was going on. It wasn't just that one passenger train. There were quite a number that had to be taken around. And the railway was also trying really hard not to let too many people be aware of what was happening, because they were terrified people would assume that this was normal when it absolutely is not. The solution came down to ballast. They just began dumping ballast into the hole. It took 300 wagon loads of the stuff before they managed to make the ground solid again. At that point, they fixed the rails and resumed normal operations. They did some inquiries regarding the incident to try to figure out exactly what happened, and I guess many of you are probably wondering, yeah, why, uh, why did a random hole suddenly open up underneath the rails and swallow a train? Fair question. There are actually a couple explanations for it, but they didn't all involve the act of subsidence. Subsidence is a term that refers to the up and down motion of the Earth below us. Scientifically, it's not very specific, because a lot of things can cause it to happen. In this case, it was believed the mines that were below where these rails were laid actually caused the ground to become unstable and subsidence to occur. This is disputed for a few reasons, mainly that the mines themselves didn't collapse. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that they had nothing to do with it, because any kind of mining, especially excessive mining, does disturb the ground. Any kind of disruption, vibrations, digging, things like that, can have a ton of ill effects on the earth below us, some of which can't even be seen. This activity and its repercussions are hard to predict even nowadays, and back then, this was very remotely understood. 
Another explanation for the subsidence actually involved a natural process of, well, a sinkhole. I mean, this pretty much was a sinkhole, but whether it was the mining's fault or a natural one is unclear. The theory goes that there's an underground stream of water, and there was a sand patch that came loose and was swept away by the water, or dissolved, or liquefied, or, you know, quick sandy, or whatever you want to say. The point is, that's what caused the hole to open up, but it's, it's as good a guess as anyone. The point is, we really don't exactly know what specifically caused the hole to open. We know it hasn't opened up since, but whether or not it was the mining, or whether or not it was just bad luck, we may never know exactly for sure. What we do know is that 115 is still absolutely under the ground. It's still down there. It's never been retrieved. And in fact, it's still considered preserved officially. Now, how preserved is it? Well, who knows? It's underground. No one has attempted to reach down there to, you know, get a look at it at all, because we don't even know how deep it is. If it fell down into the mine workings, it would be 500 feet underneath the ground. But some people speculate it may have only gone about 80 to 90 feet, which is still a fair distance for a locomotive to fall underneath dirt, but it would be far easier to reach if that were the case. The thing is, no one's really seemed to have attempted to do this. For one thing, I think they're kind of scared of opening up their sinkhole because the act of digging might cause that to happen, especially if the mines were what did it in the first place. The other thing is, how much would it be worth to do? It'd be a lot of effort to dig up a lot of soil just to get to this engine, whose condition, while it's respectively called preserved, is up for debate. I mean, it depends on how dry the ground has been, how far it fell, whether or not, you know, any more movements have happened underneath the soil since then that might have shifted it or dented it, or... There's so many factors here to consider when it comes to this locomotive that it's hard to say exactly how good a shape it would be in. Would it be nice to get out of the ground? Oh, sure, I'd be all for it. But funding that sort of thing, especially when there's so many unknowns, is a pretty tough prospect. Unlike with a lot of the trains I've talked about so far, where we have seen exactly where they're at and know how deep they are, even in the Churchill Tunnel, they at least know pretty much exactly where the engine is. So gauging how to get there and how much work that would take isn't as difficult as this case, where we literally have no earthly clue how much digging it would take to find this engine. And for that reason, I think it's very likely that 115 might stay underground forever and never be seen again. Which is a shame. I, I don't want that, but I'm just saying the act of getting it out of there, it, it, it's a tough proposition. I, I would not be envious of someone trying to, you know, line up investors to do it. You need a bunch of private rail fans who have a lot of money and a lot of time, and, uh, yeah, I mean, good luck. Good luck if anyone wants to try. I, I, I'd i definitely be interested, but, uh, I mean, I don't have any money. Don't ask me. I don't even, I don't even have, have a truck, okay? I, I can't even haul soil away. Really, I, I can go borrow my parents' shovel or something. That's about the best you'll get out of me, is what I'm trying to say. But with that, till next time, this is Darkness, and a bit you all a fond farewell.